Alright, it's your man, the Toothless Wonder, a.k.a. Foul Shot, on the Bamboozled Again News Network. And this will just highlight again the Barnabas Principle. You know, the God who we who we picked, you know, the murderer, or the unaliver, rather, who was picked over Yeshua. We done did it again. And I'm getting better with this, like, as far as, like, news vexing me and all that. I understand the day and time we live in. I'm practicing some acceptance, right? But I guess Young Thug's getting out of jail or has already gotten out on a plea deal with 15 years probation. I think it was all basically like reality TV, me, myself. But again, I got partners and various people I know taking to social media, championing free. This is no different than Negroes championing the Democratic Party, you know. Demand and, you know, had people hit. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. But this is the dude we're talking about to free. Like society is going to change. Like we're getting some show enough activists out here back on the streets. And he's going to make our lives better, yo. It, it just it just be blowing my mind. Like, free him for what? And what he finna do? You know what I'm saying? <sighs> but you got a homeboy, you know what I'm saying, who got a trespassing charge. He's still locked up. You don't walk around with no shirt saying free him. You know what I mean? Couple, I'm waiting for the, the, the news to come out. That bird man then hit, uh, hit Young Thug with the Diddy action. Cause I know he busted him up. You know what I mean? You got pictures all over the internet. Man wearing wedding dresses and raiding outfits and sticking his tongue out and all this head. And and the Negro man, just, the young Negro urbanized man, screaming and hollering like it's going like him coming home going to change his life. But I've noticed something too, right? There's a there's a there's a influx of dudes coming home right um the, the the founder the alleged founder of the zoe pound gang and and you know miami you know meach here we go with young thug i think they're championing to get the menendez brothers out and i'm like wow a whole lot of people getting out right and maybe they should maybe they shouldn't but all of them together this reminds me of when venezuela uh had their currency crash and they just let a whole bunch of people out of prison. You know what I mean? This is insane, bro. You know what I mean? It just it just further, you know, categorizes to me the level at which black quote unquote culture has fallen. And what they've been sold to us as heroes and you know what I'm saying? And everybody done told on each other, but they still come. It, it, again, street culture don't even make no sense. Everybody's telling. There's a, a, allegedly some dude in uh, St. Louis, a kingpin. I think he's supposed to come home. But he's saying Big Meech, third party, cooperated against him. But it ain't going to make no difference. Nobody's even, even on your job. They don't adhere to the mission state. It's just, you know, in theory and lip service. They don't even adhere to their own rules. But we always give a pass, depending on if we like them or not. You know, just it's bamboozling to me. You understand? Like, is this what it is? But again, it seems like when you go to jail, let's say you turn Muslim or you reform yourself, they don't let you out. <clears throat> again, Larry Hoover has been locked up, I don't know, 40, I don't know. How long he been locked up? 30, 40 years? He's like 70 something now. And essentially the only uh supermax federal prison where like terrorists and, and enemies of the state are housed in extreme isolation. I watched uh the Sam the Bull dude, I guess he was there for a period of time, and he talks about how just like you might not talk like you might not talk to people. You know, every so often, like, they say it's the clean version of hell. He's still locked up. But all the, as Charleston White say, all the rapping ass niggas, ain't none of them saying free him. You had to, I guess you're a white woman, Kim Kardashian. I think she had a little campaign at one point to get him out. But I'm pretty sure he's reformed. You know what I mean? You ain't gonna let him out? Wouldn't he help with the violence or, or at least the morale in Chicago? Like Tukey Williams. He changed. He started denouncing gang culture to a degree, and 
you know what I mean, started writing children's books and wrote about how far we are from what the original principles of the organization are, and they executed him. You know, it's like it's like when you change, they go ahead and take you out or leave you in there. But when you're still a detriment to the society, when you still have gang connections and affiliations and run organizations, you get out of jail. <laughs> this place, it, it is, you know, I heard Newbury say something to the fact of like, you know, people think everything's a joke and somebody highlighting this kind America's a joke. It is. You got to laugh it off. And because of my analytical brain, I'm, I'm getting better with attempting to understand that which is ununderstandable. It just is what it is. You know what I'm saying? And then even in my personal life, with various wrongdoers who have committed egregious actions, you hard-pressed to get anybody to even look into them, let alone bring them to justice in an effort to get them to stop. You know what I'm saying? But me, myself, you know, I had a situation a few months back that tried to break bad on me about $73 worth of child support. And I had to keep going down there with verification that came from their agency that, that what they were alleging wasn't true. I'm like, this came from y'all. How much more va va uh, documentation do I need of what I'm saying? And it got y'all letterhead on it. And I'm giving it back to the people from which it came. Then they hit you with a whole bunch of technicalities and Oh, man. It's just it's just the everyday struggle. It, it don't even vex me no more. I just go out here and handle my business. It, it does get a little uh, irritating. You know what I'm saying? Because I try to be as efficient as possible. Then it's like they try to make you jump through hoops. And, you know what I mean? I guess, you know, gaslight you to a degree. You know, in the effort to get you all off course and all that. But I've kind of been in it for a while, so I done got better with it. You know what I mean? This is insane. Like... The Barnabas Principle. And I guess from even back in the day, you know, during Yeshua's time, this has always been something, I think, in the DNA of, of Negroes. We'll, we'll pick the dude who's actually committed crimes against his own people and champion him. It's not like this dude, nor do I, I uh, I'm not advocating for this, but it's not like he was putting it on the oppressor and running down on him and going to war with him, he, 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 he clapping at other black folks. And the dude he clapped at, he's still locked up. But the dude who orchestrated him getting clapped at gets out. <clears throat> I can't even, job, even make the video because it just... But then meanwhile, back at the ranch in your local uh, neighborhood and community, Brothers going to prison in droves. Uh, like 8-Ball said, trying to live up to these rap lyrics. Get up in the joint. <clears throat> get up in, 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 the, in the Jimmy Jank. And then that, it, ain't, it, ain't, it ain't all good now. When they forcing you to join a gang. So that the, the 60 old booty warrior. Who cut up like he's 35. Try to run down on you. So then you, you got to get with the gang. <clears throat> and that ain't nothing but a... a piranha type of uh, social grouping because everybody playing on each other and trying to cross it it's so crazy now <clears throat> the people you hang around in the sense of little dirt the people you hang around cause you the most pain and detriment because you can't please everybody like I said you darned if you do darned if you don't granted it'll probably gonna happen anyway but the fact that it came from a childhood friend that you would actually looked out for he the, he the one line you up for the government. You can't trust nobody at this point. Not in this culture. <clears throat> Maybe in days past. But as they, you know, this this individualized, selfish culture of no morality or just ethics or common decency. Like, oh, yeah, I could do this for the government. But my mind off the strength of that. Nah, I can't do that. Because my insides won't allow me to do it. You know what I mean? Shoot, it don't matter what you do for a brother. There's there's a key point or a key saying. Nobody values that which they didn't earn. But then let's say you don't look out for him. He'd have, you know what I mean? He'd have done did it anyway. He probably wouldn't have been close enough to you, but he'd have probably told whatever information he did have at, at his disposal. 
you can't win. You darned if you do, darned if you don't. Just like almost in, in, in dating or in, from what we see in the modern culture, you can quote unquote, which I don't even know what this means, do everything right. And she'll say, oh, you were just too good for me and leave. You know what I'm saying? Or you can just be a douchebag or whatever. And, you know, she might be turned on by your toxicity. But then she'll just leave you for a better douchebag. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yo, we become a joke. Like I say in the word, we're a byword. You know what I'm saying? We can't even be described at this point, yo. Oh man, this is this is wild. This is wild. And then I was thinking too, right? Because as far as I've heard thus far, like no no like celebrity or anybody of note was unalive yesterday on Halloween that I personally know of as as of the making of this video. And I'm wondering why that is. Did they throw us off? Here's here's what I think though. I think, you know, Beelzebub be like, you know, y'all ain't, ain't, ain't got to do that. You know what I mean? Because we're going to do a mass sacrifice after the election. We're going to sacrifice everybody's minds. I'll take that. Y'all been doing a bang up job. You know what I mean? Y'all sit this one out. Y'all can just chill and, and dance around the uh, statue of an owl and drink owl blood. And, you know what I'm saying? Everybody get in the room and plug each other up. You know what I mean? We'll, we'll, we'll get back to the business after the, after the election. Yes, uh, this might be the best bank boozement since since COVID. I don't know, yo. I think I don't know. I, I haven't seen the polls. I haven't seen anything pertaining to that. And this is no spotty sense. I I I think Camille. I think they gonna put her in there somehow, some way, because they gonna put in there whoever they want. Just like when Bush and what was that? Bush and Gore. Uh. And Gore won the popular vote, but they just put Bush in there anyway. <clears throat> then the country was in an uproar about that. Then they just took you to war. When, from what I understand, they had the war plans drawn up six months prior to 9-11. You know what I'm saying? All this, all this is staged. It's like political WWE. The music industry is based like musical WWE. You know what I'm saying? Music industry. Set. Like, is anybody even making any good albums anymore? I'm so sick and tired of drill and... The beats be alright, but how many different ways? It's still different than the female rappers. How many different ways can you talk about shooting somebody? How many different ways can you talk about your box? Like the creativity and yo, everything in this place is falling, yo. You know what I'm saying? Hollywood. I don't. Uh, what was that? The Venom movie. A partner of mine said it wasn't. It wasn't even that good, so I didn't even check it out. But it's like nobody's even trying anymore. The Dwayne Wade statue that looked like somebody from uh one of them zombie movies. I done seen that statue in, uh in, imposed on so many different pictures. And and who who just like ain't nobody that's why you shouldn't have yes men around. Somebody get privy to seeing this statue of Dwayne Wade. And like, yo, what no cuz we can't do this, yo. It's like everybody just giving up or just throwing anything out there. Even in the street, they just putting out any kind of product. You gonna buy it just to say you bought something, but it ain't gonna be no huff. Oh man, this was some huff. Oh uh, yeah, I got a bad batch. You know what I'm saying? But this, but this one right here though, this, 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 this right here, Nick. This, this right here. Yo, it's just, it's funny now. The whole place, the whole demonstration is out of order. That's why I might call this jump. Oh, almost missed my turn. This whole demonstration out of order. We know better than this. No, we, it's not that we know barrenness. At this point, we should be coming out the matrix. Because it should be obvious to even what we would consider the NPC. It's the illusion, the, the, the glamour of it is no longer glamouring at all. You know what I'm saying? Your healthcare systems and that's a joke. You know what I'm saying? Like everything here, your institutions, your the banks, they glitching out all the time. You know what I mean? Every time you hop on, you know, TikTok on one of these apparatuses, you always got some pastor mind saying something, wow. Or they going to jail for embezzling money. <laughs> Sometimes, because I got a super duper sensitive conscience. I be wondering, like, do these people even, like, are they waiting for a day of reckoning? Or are they, like, looking over their shoulder? Or, you know what I'm saying? 
That's why I be tripping like how these wrong do walk around peacocking. Like they to show enough. And there's nothing about your behavior or character. But I guess the blind leading the blind. I don't know, man. <clears throat> then the, S yo, uh, the SRBG, man, I like his channel. He said something real. Now, he back because his second to last video, he was talking about how he was depressed or whatever the case may be. And, uh, you know, sometimes I do get hit with this, like, the weight of the world or the energy of the world. And I'm like, God damn, boy. Ooh-wee. So I've heard a, a bunch of brothers. It seems we're all simultaneously doing the same thing as far as, like, fasting, you know, juicing, just trying to raise our vibration. Because I can feel the weight. I'm pretty decent today, but you can just feel the weight of the world or just the energy. It's like... Like, I went out, I had to deliver a couple orders during Halloween. And I dropped off one order. man. Which, and that's another thing. Yo, everybody looked right stupid to me yesterday, yo. Grown folk dressed up with wrestling mask, uh, wrestling paint mask on their face. And, you know what I'm saying? So I dropped the order off. So, he, so dude, I don't even know. I just wasn't feeling it. I can't even say he said something slick. It was just his tone. It was kind of like he was telling me what to do, I guess, or where to drop the food off. And it wasn't even his. <clears throat> so I had to kind of get with him a little bit and let him know, man, look, I don't even care about what you're talking about, yo. I'm going to do my job and I'm out of here. You looking crazy out here, too. Let me get on away from you, cuz. You know what I mean? Before I spaz out. You know what I mean? It, was just, it just looked it crazy. And then here in Maryland, it was it was insanely warm for almost the day before the 1st of November. What was that Wu Tang song? I don't know. It was all so simple then. Now, ain't nothing simple. And if it is simple, they finna overly complicate it. Just doing simple stuff is becoming complicated. Raising your children. Just natural stuff. Got a whole bunch of, you know, it's like the sheep herd. You got to hurry up, make sure this ain't, you know what I mean? This ain't over here. Got to go over here. Oh, let me check over here because I know they be trying to come over here. You know what I'm saying? You wear yourself out trying to protect your flock. You know what I'm saying? And they just flocking, so that's why you got to have a shepherd. So you're like, hey, let me go on over here and get you because I don't know what's over there. And, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, it's literally like it feels like being in an alternate universe, yo. Oh, but the SRBG man was talking about how, uh, you know, we use that talking point like NPC, non-playable characters, like people just easily led by the system or influenced by and he made, he made a very profound statement. Technically, we as chosen ones are God's NPCs. We're programmed to do a certain thing. We're programmed to wake up at a certain time. I mean, awaken, rather, <clears throat> at a certain time. You know what I mean? Uh, it seems as though, and I've kind of alluded to this in previous videos, it seems like I can do no more than he allowed. No matter what, it could be something that I'm deeming good or will progress me on in life financially or resource wise or whatever the case may be i can do no more than he allowed and it's been like that for a while i used to wonder i'm like yo why i can't do this just like get a job or whatever the case may be because looking back on it in hindsight he was training me to rely on him everybody else go to therapy and get something out of it. how come i see how stupid it is for me now you know just i'm talking about me right because he was training me to rely solely on him for direction. You know what I'm saying? And his sovereign timing. Like, even if you look at anybody in the scriptures, like, they had, a, like, a basic training kind of situation. Other than maybe, I guess, say, you know, the disciples. But most of the problem, like, they went through years of training first and then hit the scene with the gangster land. That's why I know it's like, how do you pastor? You go to some Europeanized uh, theology school, and now you're just pastoring a church. I thought you were supposed to be called to do that. And then I thought there was a certain taunt, like, oh, you get called, and then you don't hear nothing. Then you get called again, and then he sits, or, or he puts you in isolation and sits you on the shelf. Then you get called again, but by the time you get called this last time, now, now you bought that action. Now, you know what I'm saying? You can stand up to the world. You can, you can preach, you know, hard truths. Everybody hates you for the most part. But you're still doing good out here. Uh, you personally might live a more minimalistic lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Just like, um, you know, the pastor is supposed to shepherd the flock, right? 
but typically he don't live nowhere to flock at. He's out of touch. And then the flock give him money to maintain his lifestyle. You know what I mean? Like when I was in North Carolina one time, we did this thing called walkathon, where you basically walk around and beg for money uh, on behalf of the program. Which I, I kind of, and we did it on New Year's Eve. So I'm like, man, I don't feel comfortable doing this, yo. It's, it's people holiday, not many people chilling, and we knocking on their door begging for money. You know, like we carry that little tin cup, like, I'm a recovering addict. Can, can you please help this organization help me, please? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I didn't want to do it. And then other people was doing it and pocketing the money. So I said, nah, I ain't going to do that. So they finally convinced me to do it. But they said, don't go over here because that's Pastor Sutton. I forgot his name now. Lockett. What's that his name? Yeah, that was his name. That's Pastor Lockett uh, uh, House, right? In Greensboro, North Carolina. Had a mega church, right? He was getting big, big sweet potatoes in the donations. You know what I'm saying? Man, the man, so I looked so, the man house so big, I had to look at it in sections. I couldn't take it all in with just, you know, the the the, the, the vision of my eyes. I had to look like, God damn. You know, or you might, have, you know, you got back up and look at something to take it all in in totality. But we couldn't go over there, though. You know what I'm saying? It was, I mean, in and of itself don't mean nothing. But again, and I get it from the 501c3 perspective, but all these churches, all the issues we got in the hood, and they ain't addressing none of it. The church has no influence in the community in which it operates. What? Where the pie at? At least they went out, you know, two by two and affected people. <clears throat> and if they, you know, weren't received and got hit upside the head with rocks, they just went on to the next town and kept on with the campaign. And I've been seeing that. It's like everybody in the church is trying to assimilate or, or get in the good graces. Or this is how it worded. The way they would preach it, they could tell how much God was blessing you by how much worldly success you had. Then I read the Bible and I don't see none of them type people in there. I've been left that jump. I'm I'm leaving like every day I find more and more stuff to boycott personally and more and more Negroes to write off. You know what I'm saying? My mind showed me a picture of uh, Bun B from the group UGK, you know, Pimp C homeboy with a with a Jeffrey uh sweatshirt on. You again young thug, right? That's a real name, Jeff. Sweet Jeff, right? So I'm like, how he get that uh what's the name so fast? So then my partner tell me. Oh, he got a clothing line. I ain't never seen him wear his own clothes. So, but magically he hurry up the day after he get out and, and got a what do he got it? Uh, Acme uh shipping from the cartoons where you order it and then half a second later it drop out the sky and it's yours. Come on, cuz. Bun B Bun B remind me of the nation of Islam after Malcolm X died. Know what I'm saying? Like he like he don't got on. Uh, I guess a different situation. But he's supposed to be out the street culture. He went on stage. I mean, went on stage. Went on stand and snitch. Man, all these. Man, we, man, we've been completely demoralized by the system, yo. Man, we will bend, fold, appease, all that for the system. Now I can see how the table will be set for those who don't do it. And how these people who play tough will tell on you and get you lined up. I can see how they can push this forward and break the guillotines back out. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you don't you don't believe in reproductive rights? Oh, you're archaic. Oh, you're holding us back. Yeah, from destroying young kids. <laughs> How's that even a thing? That's probably one of the greatest uh mind Fs ever. To convince you to unalive your own children. How about you stop sleeping with people you don't want to have kids by? Problem solved. That would change up a whole lot about you. As far as the dynamic between men and women. But yet yeah, I digress. I don't know. I just wanted to come through with a quick one. Let's keep on with the keep on. I'll keep holding on. And on that note, I'm going to holler at y'all.